And so we'll give you a little bit of extra time here to answer this one, Chuck Williams. It is directed at you, and then we'll allow for Mr. Matthews' response. So take a couple of minutes. We've got several questions in this same general vein. It deals with, as you might imagine, your role with the North Georgia Bank, its failure. If you wanted to take some time to explain that from your perspective, do so. Thank you. When North Georgia Bank opened in 2000, our state of Georgia was growing at a, a pretty good pace. Uh, in the decade prior to us opening in 2000, I think Georgia's population had grown by some 26 percent. District 113 was seeing its share of this growth, uh, and actually there were waiting lists for the products that were being produced by our builders and developers in the district. Uh, Government-sponsored mortgage entities such as Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac were encouraging home ownership through innovative mortgage products. As they say, life was good for many. Now let me just share this with you. Community banks tend to mirror their local economies. For North Georgia Bank, this meant that our loan portfolio from day one was weighted towards residential development and construction lending. Again, think back 10 years ago and look at what was driving the economy uh, in Oconee County in Northeast Georgia. Uh, when the U.S. economy seized up and, and almost imploded in 2008, the demand for housing simply evaporated pretty much overnight. Builders and developers found themselves with a product that no one wanted, and even if anybody did want it, they couldn't get financing for it. Uh, Wall Street Journal, back on June 8th, uh, Ben Bernanke, Chairman of the Federal Reserve, referenced that we're, we're now working through the worst economic slump that we have seen in banking and housing since the Great Depression. Uh, banks found themselves with bad loans and, and loan collateral that was sinking in value. Now, yes, our bank willingly made loans to builders and developers, and as the CEO of the former North Georgia Bank, I obviously accept responsibility for everything that occurred at our bank. And that includes not only the problems, but the good things we did, the, the loans that we made to families and businesses, the dollars that we put back in this community and civic and charitable organizations, and the considerable sweat equity that, that myself and our employees put into the community. Now just reference this, Georgia has lost 20% of our banks since mid-2008 when the economic downturn hit. Uh, North Georgia Bank was the 55th bank to fail in Georgia since 2008. Uh, that death toll is now at 65, and I dare say it is, it is not over yet. We've lost young banks, we've lost 100-year-old banks. The common denominator really is, was that bank operating in a high-growth area? Now, throughout all of this, bear in mind that there's not been a single loss of depositor funds in any bank failure in Georgia or throughout the U.S. Uh, no hit to taxpayers because the FDIC, as you may know, is funded not by tax dollars but by assessments on banks. Unfortunately, the shareholders in our bank and every other bank that has failed in Georgia took it on the chin. Uh, we knew when we made that investment 11 years ago, and that includes myself and my board of directors, we knew that that was an at-risk investment, and actually our disclosures at the time to our potential investors said clearly, do not make this investment if you cannot afford to lose it. Uh, let me just share one more thing with you. The FDIC thoroughly examined the circumstances of the North Georgia Bank failure. There have been no allegations whatsoever of any wrongdoing on my part, the board's part, or management's part. I actually worked for the FDIC and then the acquiring institution for some eight weeks after our bank was closed. Folks, that simply does not happen when there's any evidence or any suspicion of malfeasance on the part of regulators. So was it a tough life lesson? Yes, it was a very tough life lesson. Did I learn things from it? Sure. And I learned lessons that I will take to Atlanta and I will use as we try to help Georgia work through some of the problems to what the rest of the economy is working through. Mr. Williams, we'll leave it there. Dan Matthews, a moment or two to respond to that. <clears throat> I appreciate Mr. Williams uh, claiming some responsibility for it. What I'd like to know is have you apologized to the shareholders who have lost well over a half million dollars in this uh, debacle of uh, responsibility for the bank failure at North Georgia Bank? Now, it's a community bank, but I don't think Lovejoy is very much in our community. That's Clayton County. That's well on the other side of Atlanta. And I don't think that is a place that's deserving of loans from a bank in Oconee County. It's just my opinion. But you have the FDIC tell you in very specific terms. The people on your board of directors didn't have a whole lot of fiduciary uh, experience. And you had members of the board of directors that passed away. You didn't replace them either. 
there have been a series of blunders and errors in this process that I think make people wonder about your leadership possibility and your business practices, and I don't think you should be rewarded with being sent to Atlanta because of that. Now, I'm not part of the bank. I bank at Oconee State Bank. I think that's a fine community bank. I think they have uh, survived this area, and I think you, your bank made a lot of decisions based on what was going on at Oconee State Bank to pay some of your employees some rather high salaries based on the uh, difficult economic times of the, that were going on. I think that the uh, banks that survived have done a very good job of keeping things local, and I applaud Oconee State Bank for doing so.